Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm the blogger behind BrighterGrowling.com. Um, if my face looks somewhat familiar, I'm filming two videos today. Um, same makeup, I just threw a cardigan on. So, um, sorry if that is upsetting to you, but I gotta get it done. So, um, today we are going to finish my 2019 Project Pan empties and see what happened. So um, I'm literally just going to read off of my checkpoint video, which was I think around the six month mark around there. So I know a lot of things I actually finished up then, which was awesome. So let's see what happened for the rest of it. So let's start with the first thing, which was eyeshadows. Guys, this is impossible, <laughs> but I did do really well at not purchasing any eyeshadow this year with the exception of a few palettes from Beauty Counter, because as you guys might not know, or maybe you do know, I am a Beauty Counter consultant now, just because I got really educated on clean beauty and some stuff that was just really disturbing for me as somebody who went through infertility and has autoimmune disease. Um, so around August, I decided to become a Beauty Counter consultant. So I did need to get some of the eyeshadow palettes. I wanted to test them out. So besides Beauty Counter eyeshadows, I did not buy any oh i'm a liar mm, liar okay i bought one other eyeshadow palette but it was because of clean beauty the only other eyeshadow palette i bought minus beauty counter is this palette by aether beauty and this is a clean beauty brand so um i did not buy any traditional brands eyeshadows just this one from aether so i think i did pretty well um in terms of not buying more <laughs> so let me just get to where we were at so the mac eyeshadows the singles that i have oh it's just impossible like this is the way to go guys financially I'm telling you don't buy palettes anymore don't buy palettes I know it sounds a nice because you know you feel like you're gonna get like other shadows to try how often do you really use them I have all of these singles like this is the ColourPop ones I did use this I did um, I just cannot make a dent now the other part of the problem was I got eyelash extensions like from at some point after September, I forget when I put them on. Um, but when you have eyelash extensions on, you really don't want to wear a lot of eye makeup. So the eyeshadows <laughs> sat around for a while. So um, I have just so many. So that was the ColourPop ones. Here's just a random mix of Makeup Geek, Anastasia Beverly Hills, um, and MAC. This was a palette that I use a lot of. Um, and then these are all like a bunch of matte singles, just all different matte ones. And then these are like my satins and shimmers. I don't think I use this very much, but I'm going to put this again. I think in 2020, I'm not going to buy any eyeshadow either. I really think I don't need it. So, no, I know I don't need it. So 2020 is going to also be no more eyeshadow. Okay. Um, I also have the Modern Renaissance eyeshadow palette was in my, um, is it? Maybe it's not. Yeah, it is. Okay. The Modern Renaissance palette was part of my project pan this year, and I think I did a really good job at this, but honestly, I don't think there's been much change since September in terms of things I've hit pan on. So all of them are have hit pan on, except, and I said this in the checkpoint, the ones I don't need as much product of, so the darker shades. Mm, that's not even true, because Antique Bronze and Cypress Upper, these brown ones, brownish ones, have hit pan. So overall, I think I did a good job of making a dent in this I could do better so I'm gonna keep adding this to 2020 simply because I didn't wear as much eyeshadow this last half of the year um, because of the extensions I'm going to let the extensions kind of fall out now I don't a lot of them have actually already fallen out so um, yeah anyway then there's some things that we just finished there weren't they weren't in my project pan but I wanted to mention them since I emptied them out um, the I finished this entire foundation, which is crazy. I like how many people it, it takes forever to finish a foundation if you're a beauty blogger. I feel like we have so many that we never finish one. <laughs> it takes a lot longer. But anyway, this is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation in natural beige. This was a lighter shade for me. I have the darker one that's my summer shade, but honestly, I didn't get much color this summer, so I didn't really use it much. So, um, but I finished this one. I'm not gonna repurchase this simply because with my cleaner beauty um, uh, lifestyle, is that even the right word? I don't know. My cleaner beauty preferences, I'm trying to keep things at a toxicity level of around a five or less when I try brands that aren't necessarily clean. Um, I have a threshold here. So this is a little too high. I wanna say this cord like a six or a seven in terms of toxic ingredients. So I personally don't feel comfortable with 
purchasing this anymore, but it is a really pretty foundation. And I did finish it up. So that's going to go in the garbage. I also finished up a tube of my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in light medium. This is really light, um, almost really too light. It almost looked ashy on my skin. I feel like I've used it in other videos and um, you could tell like it was just way too light. So um, I did finish it up thankfully. So this is all done. I have two backups of that. I have new shades. Like I'm never without Tarte Shape Tape. It's not the cleanest. Um, only because they put fragrance in it. It's stupid. I don't know why they did that. If they took the fragrance out, it would score a lot lower, but it's still okay for me. So um, I'm still going to use it because until I find something cleaner and as good of a performer, I'm going to keep using certain things until, you know, I can replace it. So the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. I have two of these. I have a summer shade and a winter shade. I haven't used them. The summer shade is almost done. This is shade seven. And I'm to about here on this bottle. I don't even know how much that would maybe be like two weeks of regular use if I use this every day. It's just too dark right now. And now we're in what, January? Like I'm probably not gonna be using this for a few months. Um, so I will keep use, I'm gonna keep using this because this actually scores pretty well in terms of like toxic ingredients. I hate saying that, but like in terms of not clean ingredients, it's not a bad option. It's not the cleanest, but it's definitely not as bad as others. So I like, um, I'm gonna keep this in my collection until I finish this one up. And then this is shade six. This is my normal everyday kind of a shade. This one I'm a little less than halfway. I'm at around here, here. So um, I use this pretty regularly when I want more coverage than like my Beauty Counter Tint Skin Foundation, which is more like a CC cream everyday kind of a wear. Next up is the MAC Blush in Gingerly. This is definitely not clean, um, but it's one of those things that I'm trying to make the most of my money and I really love this blush. It was my wedding day blush, so I don't know if I'll ever really get rid of it because it's special to me. So I'm sorry, the light got really bright in here because the sun, Whew, I look like a ghost. Um, but this is like that peachy bronze kind of a color. It's matte. I really love this bronze, this blush. There are similar shades, similar options. I'll even show you. I have one right here by Kosas. This is a blush that's clean. It, it looks very similar, right? Like there's the Kosas blush. It's dual sided. And here's Mac Gingerly. So I, I get a very similar look using this and this is cleaner, but, um, I have this forever. It'll probably last me till my daughter gets married. So anyway, um, we're going to keep using the MAC Gingerly until I feel otherwise. <laughs> the next thing that I'm still working on using and it's going to take forever to finish is the Marc Jacobs Undercover Eye Primer. Like I said, I didn't use much eyeshadow because I had the extensions on, so I didn't use much primer. And then the days I was wearing eyeshadow, I just didn't think to use Primer. I've just been doing pretty okay with a concealer as a primer. Um, today, I have no primer on. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just feel like I do think eyeshadow primer is important. And when you have like a wedding or a special event, or let's say you're out at work all day long and you're somebody who wears eyeshadow every day, I think eyeshadow primer makes a big difference. But for me, I stay home with Savannah every day. Like, I work from home. Um, I'm not going to events all the time. Like I don't find a primer is necessary on the eyes unless you are super duper oily. So it's hard for me to finish this up, but I'm going to keep it in my collection. I'm going to try to keep using it. Um, but that's just kind of where I'm at in life. Okay. So now there are three items here that are just a hard no for me in terms of toxic ingredients and ingredients that I don't feel comfortable using on my skin and body anymore. Um, the products are nowhere near done, but they're done for me. So number one is my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. How The one caveat with this one is, it actually doesn't even score super bad, surprisingly. Um, the problem is this is just old. And when I, f I find that when a foundation gets old, it's not even that the texture changes for me or that it smells weird. It's, it breaks me out. Isn't that so funny? So this is a foundation that I did try to use, but I found that I was breaking out from it. I do get congestion from using Estee Lauder Double Wear if I wear it too many days in a row, but this was like straight up breakouts. Like my skin was like, no, this something's wrong with this formula and it's just old. So it doesn't score great in terms of toxicity. 
it doesn't score the worst, but more of anything, I'm getting rid of this because it start breaking me out. Next, this is toxic. This is like a bad ingredients and I just cannot use it. So, and I also hated this. Like, do you guys remember when I was talking about it in the midpoint check-in, the NARS duo in Laguna and Orgasm? I hated this and the ratings were terrible anyway. Um, so whatever. Um, the bronzer is not dark enough for me. I needed to use like four times the normal amount to get it to show up on my skin. And the same thing with Orgasm. It just is too chalky and like it just wasn't transferring on my skin properly like people love this it's a cult favorite i don't think it works well on my skin tone like more medium olive so we are done with this i'm so over it um lastly the uh pressed powder from mac the mineral skin finish natural and medium golden i had hit pan on this like i hit the brick the baked bottom but it's just not worth it the scoring i think was like really high i went around like an eight in terms of toxicity maybe even more um and that's just too much for me my threshold's like i said around a five ish give or take um but eight is like a hard no so um i have other pressed powders that i'm really enjoying this was not worth keeping because of that reason alone so we're getting rid of that one so okay that finishes up my 2019 project pan empties um, I don't think I'm going to film this in 2020 simply because I don't even know what I want to finish. I am like in a place where I'm exploring a lot of new brands and clean beauty and sorry for the brightness, the sun, um, and also just like reevaluating other brands that necessarily aren't clean, but maybe their products aren't too bad. So I'm definitely in a place of transition in terms of my beauty products. So, um, I'm glad I did this in 2019 and I'm definitely glad I worked through a good number of products and I cleaned out so many products, but I don't think I'm ready to commit to doing a project pan in 2020 because I'm in a place of exploration <laughs> and trying new things. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was interesting. Um, for me, it definitely was interesting. It was good to kind of focus on certain products that maybe didn't get as much love. But like I said, I'm going to be exploring some new products this year and I'm excited to have you guys on the journey to try them with me. So let me know how you guys did with your project pants. Did you finish some stuff? What did you have a hard time with? Um, did you like find a new love for anything? Because that's also like a fun thing to do when you're like trying a product that maybe you forgot about like certain eyeshadows that like my modern renaissance I forgot about even the mac my mac matte eyeshadows are so good and I miss them so I am excited to like use my eyeshadows more in 2020 once these lashed extensions are gone but other than that it's a wrap guys and I'll talk to you later bye